just in case you missed it, I am demonstrating all my tools by making a coin ring and showing you how all my tools work. But at the end, I'm giving the coin ring away. So stay until you see how to enter. Steven is a man with a passion of metal detector. I've had a request, would I show the tools individually that I used to make a coin ring and put a list somewhere so they can have a look at the cost of buying them. Sure, I can do that. I thought I'd done it, but I obviously didn't. I think I've got a list of all my tools in my blog, which you can see in the video descriptions, a link to my blog there and the tools I use. But I've never actually shown the tools and how they work. Now, this is lucky because as it happens, I'm giving away a coin ring. I'm going to take the coin, show you the tool which punches the hole through, and every other tool and what it does up to the finished thing. Right, here's the half dollar. It looks brand new, doesn't it? Kennedy 64 is actually, well, it's like brand new. It's not been dug up. It's been donated to me to make a ring with. This is the, the die, and when you unscrew that, you'll see in there, the punch is like this, that punches a hole in the coin. That's the die which goes in there like that. That's exactly the same size as the punch, as you can see here, that if I put it in through that way. There we go. And there are different sizes, just in case you need to do a bigger punch. So you've got this one. And you've got this one. That really is for sixpences, very tiny coins. You'll get away with other small coins as well, maybe up to a shilling. And you'll notice if we put the coin in there, it's too much loose slack. So we need to have a shim. Right, so here's the correct shim. And if we put that in there first, you'll see now if we put the coin in, it doesn't wobble. And now, just to screw that up tightly, just finger tight, and that goes in there. Now we push it through. Right, so I'll put that on there. And we'll be using a six ton press. Don't need anything too heavy. I've also got a one ton press, but it's not man enough to do the job. Silver is quite soft, gold is even softer. So all you're gonna do now is just push that through. You heard that go through. Now if you want to buy the professional set like this then there's a friend of mine who's on Facebook called Patrick. I'll put a link to his Facebook page and you can ask him about the set or whatever size punches that you want to go with it. If you want a cheaper set then you can look on my tools list. There's a link to that on my blog. So all my tools are on the blog and there's a link to the blog in my description. So you can either check out the cheaper version, it's still solid steel like this, and they're available in the US and the UK, whereas these are, I believe, only available in the UK directly from Patrick. He makes them. So that's the hole punch. Now the next tool is a deburrer, because as you've punched through, on the side you punch from, it's pushed through, so it's nice and smooth. On this side, it's slightly rough and that needs to be taken off otherwise the next stage it could fracture the coin and Kennedy 64s are well known for fracturing so you need a deburring tool which is this that will smooth it off nicely until it's completely smooth like that And there's the bits of silver, which I'm gonna keep. Next, we've got torches. That's a fairly big torch. Um, I tend to use that for bigger coins and I will use it for this half dollar. And this one's a micro torch. And I just use that for very small coins, sixpences and things, and also to do any um, silver soldering. <laughs> That's cooling down nicely, but I'm using copper tongs. That's really a habit, because the reason you need copper tongs is if you need to get the fire scale 
off a silver coin is actually a chemical solution you use and you can't put metal in it it just does funny things so copper is the only thing you can put into the solution so it's just a habit really that I use copper tongs and I'm just going to quench this in some water now here's the next piece of equipment solid steel dapping block dapping blocks as you can see are just small circles indented different sizes and it's finding the right one now that one's too small that one's just right and you need to put the coin in the correct way round because I want I always prefer that bit to be on the outside of the coin some people like the liberty to be on the outside of the coin with the date so if I put the liberty facing up that means I'm gonna get the bit that I like on the outside of the ring put it in the dapping block make sure it's perfectly level and then I've got a 20 mil steel ball as it happens I've also got a 16 mil steel ball and a 30 mil and I use the 30 mil for the really big coins like the Morgan dollar that is a beauty huge now this is the one ton press I spoke about earlier lovely piece of equipment and it's called an arbor press again you can find those and a link to the best prices on my blog you can get the, the six ton I think it's about 60 pound for the six ton but this one's a specialist press and I think that's going to cost you more money than the, the six ton but it's really really great and they're going to just gently push that now the coin has been annealed it's even softer than it was and soft and silver is soft anyway then I'm just going to check it to make sure it's actually folding that first fold level and not with a flare or a wobble I need to make sure I get it put back in perfectly level which it is there and continue folding that first fold there we go and let's show you what we've got so far that coin has folded nicely on the first fold I just need to make sure that no splits have started no fractures so I'll just check that through a magnifying glass and give it a light sanding and a deburring once more I've deburred it I think I should show you the sanding because I use these very rough blocks which you can find on eBay just to take that edge off any rough edge and you can see it's already looking quite nice deburred and smooth with that and then I also use one of these I've got seven different grades just to go over there we go and finally some wire wool and you're thinking who oh, wire wool of a coin it's great uh, quadruple zero 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 it's ultra ultra fine and it does a really good job of keeping everything nice and smooth don't forget this is no longer a coin it's now half coin half ring and when I finished it will be a coin ring look how lovely that looks nice and smooth right I've used my copper tongs again and my torch and I've annealed it and quenched it so it's cold again to the touch and it's ready now for the next that is the second fold and this is the tool for that again different sizes I always use these resin pushers because if you use metal ones it's going to really damage the legend on the inside of the coin you need something like that the steel push if you're only going to be using it on cooper nickel so that on silver and gold and that on anything else I'm putting petroleum jelly on the die because it will be metal on metal contact the coin on the steel the coin is softer because it's silver so therefore it needs to be lubricated to stop it doing any damage now that is sitting absolutely flush as you can see and I'm going to just sit there absolutely perpendicular and then use the one ton press again I'm going to gently push this one down just so you can 
keep an eye on it all the way around because you can see around the, the edge if it starts to slip and go to one side you're going to get a really awkward shaped coin ring it's going to have a wobbly flare so it's actually best to go halfway and just check it but the actual die will do its job really well if you get it right right I'm now going to go all the way through that's through and now we've got the second fold on the coin so I'm just going to sand that again use a bit of wire wool and check for any cracks that might be just appearing under a, a magnifying glass then I'll get back to you right next we've got these two dies and these are what are used for pushing the coin ring through to make a flat wall so in other words we're going to take the coin ring from that flare into straight walls now this is what I did earlier that's a US half dollar and it's folded into a flat wall this is the one I'm going to use and that's going to sit on top of that one and the reason why is the coin ring goes through that one but it won't go through that one so once it's pressed through it will drop through the second one rather than pushing it through and it, and it hitting the base and I've got to try and get it out so this is what we do we put that in there we make sure again it's level and not crooked we put the press on the top we put that one on top of that one and then we push it through with a one ton press and you see it's come out of the bottom and it's now not quite as flared as it was makes it a lot easier to work with of course I have already annealed this again and quenched it ring sizer we want to reduce the reeded side and it's a case of just finding the right size hole which will be that one and it's again soft it's been annealed and quenched you can see there that it's made it into a really nice edge and I did the same with the other side just by turning it around and putting it in again Alright, now that's finished, you can see, look, it's got a lovely fat tyre look. I'm going to leave it like that, I think. I could make it bigger by expanding it again on the ring stretcher, and then reducing it again so it curves even more. But it's going to be uncomfortable to wear, so I wouldn't want to have that for the winner. So what it needs to do now is just to deburr the inside on the edges, give it a light sanding to make sure it's nice and perfect, and then we'll polish it up and see what it looks like before we get to the gold plating stage. Now I've mounted my drill on the bench and I've got a little sander in and I can change the sanding discs with the Velcro. The first thing I'm going to need is an 80 grit. Then I'm going to change to the 120. Then I'm going to change to a 320 and I'm going to finish it off with a 1000 grit. That's done a pretty good job of that. I'm really happy. The only thing is the inside edge now is sharp again because of all that sanding and that one needs to come down a bit too. Now these are really hard to get. I had to wait a month for these to come from China. I couldn't find them anywhere in the UK and also one of these just a little Dremel tool so after I've sanded it down with one of these which is uh, medium I can use one of these just to polish off the edges in the inside so we'll do that right now now that is marvelous just look at that but it's nowhere near as good as it's going to be we need to polish it now we've got all the scaling off and the fingerprints and grease and then we want to highly polish that this is where the dremel comes in what i'm going to do now is use 
this I know it's not a tool as such which is what this video is all about but so many people say to me how do you clean things now I've got videos about cleaning my coins and I use an ultrasonic now if I need to use anything else to put a polish on I use this it is the most magnificent polish I have ever come across right that's ready now for a polish Well, looky here, I spent a long time polishing that and I'm really impressed with the way that's turned out. So you see that glinting. That is marvellous. Now I've got to gold plate it on the inside. Well, that's all my tools for making coin ringing. You don't need that many tools. And there are a lot more you could buy too, which you could get the whole kit like me. But if you're going to do it just as a hobby and make yourself the occasional ring as a birthday gift for other people at Christmas and things like that, you don't need to buy the whole kit. But check out the link in the video description. It takes you across to my blog where I've got a full list of all the tools and they're the best prices because as the prices change, that link also shows you the cheapest prices. Now, if you want to see the gold plating process, that's a completely different matter. And I use a rectifier and electrolysis with electrodes to put the 24 karat gold onto the inside of the ring. I'm making that as a dedicated standalone video, which you can see using the link at the end of this video description. Now, if you enjoyed that video and you want to see more, then please subscribe. If it's your first time here, I'd like to know what you thought about the coin ringing and maybe the next stage, the gold plating too. So until the next video, I'll catch you later and don't be a stranger. See you soon. As I said right at the beginning and as I've said on all my social media and everywhere else, just in case you missed it, I'm going to give that coin ring away. And this is what you have to do. Well, first of all, you need to have got to this stage of the video. Believe it or not, even though there's a giveaway, many people click to leave the video before they get to the end. So all those people are already discounted and you're in. The second thing you need to do is to make sure you're a subscriber to this video channel. And number three is leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It doesn't matter which one because they are classified as an engagement by YouTube. So either one. Number four, leave the comment hashtag coin ring giveaway. So that's hashtag coin ring giveaway. Number five, for this draw to be valid, there needs to be 100 people who have done exactly what you've just done. And then I'm going to pick a winner at random from those people. If there's not 100 comments with hashtag giveaway, then the ring won't be given away. It's too valuable for me to do that if there's not enough support so i hope you enjoyed the video i hope there's just enough people to make this draw valid and everyone else has just turned off beforehand good luck catch you later in your cake all